Democrat senators say, I can't believe it. They didn't raid the House of Joe Biden. They didn't raid Obama. But Joe Biden didn't ignore a subpoena to get those documents back like Joe you Biden did. And took so that's 1850 the question. But that's the question that investigators have, I think, is why you held on to those documents when you knew the federal government was seeking them and then had given you a subpoena to return them. Are you them. ready? Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can it, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to, you're a nasty person, I'll tell you. What. <laughs> if you look at what's gone to our country, our country has gone to hell. Our borders are bad. Our military has been bad. You look at the taxes, you look at inflation, what's happened to inflation. It's just destroying our country. Uh, we've really become, in many ways, a third world country. And it's very sad what's happened in this administration. And it's uh, something that will turn around on day one. We were energy independent. Now energy is at a level that we've never had to pay before. We've, nobody can afford to continue to pay what's happening with energy. But we were energy independent. Uh, we were getting out of Afghanistan with strength and with dignity. And instead, we got out, we looked like fools. Probably the most embarrassing President moment in the history of our country. One of the big problems was that Nancy Pelosi, Crazy Nancy, as I affectionately call her, <laughs> yeah. Crazy Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington were in charge, as you know, of security. And they They're did not, not in do their the job. They're not in charge of the National Guard. You're They're, in charge of the National they are Guard. In, well, I offered them National Guard. I said, we'll give you soldiers, we'll give you National Guard, we'll give you whatever you want. And they turned me down. You're and acting in fact, she turned secretary. me down. She tur excuse me, she turned me down. In writing. But you said you weren't very involved that day. You did tell your supporters to come to Washington. You tweeted about it, about sure, that speech course. that happened on the rally. Am I so allowed when to they, say that? When they went to the Capitol and they were breaking into the Capitol, smashing windows, injuring police officers, why did you, why did it take you three hours to tell them to go home? I don't believe it did. Oh, let me pull it out. I have to pull it out. <laughs> I have to pull it out. So I have to pull it out. So if you look at... On January 5th, the day before, I said, please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Stay peaceful. This was the day before, and this was in the form of Twitter. Now I use Truth, Truth Social. I think it's far superior, okay? I hope everybody's on <laughs> I hope everybody's on Truth. Uh, if you look, January 6th, this is at 2, before 2.30, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. This is right after, as it was happening. But what happened is they took it down. I don't know why. I think they took it down because it was so good. They didn't like it being up there. <laughs> I am asking, this is, and we didn't know until I got it back, because now I have 90 million people waiting for me to go back, but I'm on truth and I'm staying on truth. Listen, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violation. It's, we want no violation. We want no violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. That was at 2.30. That was very early. Mr. President, I looked at the same timeline that you did. Once no, I know, it was but you clear, didn't report that. You know why? Because it was we taken down. We did report down. it. I, I was reporting that It was that taken day. down and it wasn't... But when it was down. clear to you that they were not being peaceful, you saw them rushing the Capitol, breaking windows, they were hitting officers with flagpoles, tasing them beating them up, when it was clear they weren't being peaceful, why did you wait three hours to tell them to leave the Capitol? They listen to you yeah. like no one else. You know that. They do. I agree with that. But so why Nancy, didn't you Pelosi, tell them to go sooner? Nancy Pelosi and the mayor are in charge. I assume they were able to do their job. They weren't. But and Pelosi's not in, in charge of Capitol security. And if you security. remember, I made a video. Yeah, he wasn't in charge either. I'm starting to think that. Now, people say he rushed the Capitol, but it's clearly people of their own fruition doing this type of shit because they were going to suffer the consequences of doing it, right? If somebody tell you go do something and you go do it, you blaming them or you blaming yourself for listening? That's the question that I, I have. You know what I'm saying too? Do I think that shit was crazy? But the way y'all hold responsibility, y'all should hold responsibility to the damn government. How y'all let people come and run up in y'all building that no one should be able to do no shit like that. But somehow it happened. And again, it can't be the, the, uh, the blaming of one man when you have a whole government, Congress, and everything in between. That is crazy. How about have more security? Like, right? I was about to say, I, how did these people were able to do all this shit? It's because y'all sending all our resources, army, everything else away. They probably in some other country doing some horrible shit. So the fact is, man, he came with some receipts. And y'all talking about three hours, four hours, whatever hours. 
them people decided to do that shit. Like, we don't even have conscious people no more. Like, people don't make decisions on their own no more. This is crazy. They listen to you, so that that's, that's what we're on. Yo, right outside the Oval Office in the Rose Garden, and I'm very proud of that video. I didn't have a script. I don't need scripts like a certain person that's in well, there what right time, now. The, the video, it, it came out much later after they had already that's attacked right, yeah. the Capitol. Going back to your influence, in Here's that three hours, over 140 officers were injured that day. And a person named Ashley Babbitt was killed. Yes. You know what? She was killed, and she shouldn't have been killed. And that thug that... And the crazy shit about it is... The, you saw he addressed the name of the person who got killed when the other lady yo they selling y'all hope on this other side they don't even know why didn't she say the lady's name that died like because she's trying to like bring home a point that is i'm gonna be honest is mute you got people in this country who probably fed up specifically on the side of trump and them boys went to go do what they did and y'all should have protection i would assume I would assume, you know what I'm saying, to a White House or any house for that matter in a government would have some heavy protection on it. You know what I'm saying? To, you live in a... So if you do the math, there's way more people than there's government officials. If everyone got together and cooed to want to stop y'all from doing anything, we could. Like, period, point, like, we was all together and not separate, we could stop y'all from doing whatever y'all want. But that would take the governments to protect themselves or at least a, a buildings. I can't blame one man for the for the choices of all them people who did that shit. I just can't. That just is not conscious or logical. Like some of them people was probably waiting years to do this type of shit. Like I, the government doing us wrong, all this other shit. So you know they was probably waiting a very long time to be able to take the opportunity to do some shit like that. And it probably only took one person to jump the fence. That killed her. There was no reason to shoot her. At blank range cold blank range they shot her and she was a good person she was a patriot One there was no was reason there. To, there was no reason and he went on television to brag about the fact that he killed her that the officer was not bragging about the fact that he oh, killed he her but bragging. one person will you pardon the january 6 rioters who were convicted of federal offenses uh, i am inclined to uh, pardon many of them I can't say for every single one because a couple of them probably they got out of control. But you know, when you look at Antifa, what they've done to Portland, and if uh, you look at Antifa, look at what they've done to Minneapolis and uh, so many other, so many other places. Look at what they did to Seattle and BLM. BLM. Many people were killed. These people. I'm not trying to justify anything. But you have two standards of justice in this country and what they've done. And I, I love that question. And that's the sad shit about it for me is like hearing the BLM shit, because in the beginning, you want to be a part of that, you know, as a melanated, melanated brother myself. But I started to realize like there's radicals on both sides. And sometimes if you're not careful, you become the thing you hate the most, you know? So those same people who was fighting for the, I guess the liberation of black people, I don't, I, I don't know the exact thing what BM, BLM was fighting for, but a lot of that shit turned into radical, stealing money, all types of like shit that didn't make no sense. And y'all represent all them people. Like, you know what I'm saying too? Now you got people thinking black people is all like that. And that's not true at all, bro. That ain't true at all. Like some people are not trying to be radical because other people were radical to them. You know what I'm saying? That, that's not how two wrongs don't make a right. It just don't. So trying to meet that force with evil forces, because if you felt they was evil, then you got to come correct. You can't come evil and then think you're going to get the same results. Bro. What they've done to so many people is nothing, nothing. And then what they've done to these people, they've persecuted these people. And yeah, my, my answer is I am most likely, if I get in, I will most likely, I would say it will be a large portion of them. You know, they did a very... And it'll be very early on. And they're living in hell right now. So when it comes they're to They're living pardons. in hell. And they're policemen, and they're firemen, and they're soldiers, and they're carpenters, and electricians, and they're great people. Many of them are just great people. Mr. President, one of the people who was convicted was a former policeman, but he was convicted of attacking a police officer, I should note. But when you said you are considering pardoning a large portion 
of those charged with crimes on January 6th. Does that include the four Proud Boys members who were charged and convicted of seditious conspiracy? I don't know. I'd have to look at their case. But I will say, in Washington, D.C., you cannot get a fair trial. You cannot. Just like in New York City, you can't get a fair trial. Either. I'm from New York. He ain't lying. This shit is... <laughs> This shit skewed. This woman, I don't know her. I never met her. I have no idea who she is. I had a picture taken years ago with her and her husband, nice guy, John Johnson. He was a newscaster, very nice man. She called him an ape. Happens to be Afri African American. Called him an ape. The judge wouldn't allow us to put that in. Her dog or her cat was named Vagina. The judge wasn't allowed to put that in. All of these things. Are, the but cat. with her, they could put in anything. Access this Hollywood. This was a jury of anything. nine people who found right. you liable of sexual abuse. Do you think that, that that will deter women from voting for you? No, I don't think so, because I think the whole thing, just so you understand, ready? I never met this woman. I never saw this woman. This woman said, I met her at the front door of Bergdorf Goodman, which I rarely go into other than for a couple of charities. I met her in the front door. She was about 60 years old, and this is like 22, 23 years ago. I met her in the front door of Bergdorf Goodman. I was immediately attracted to her, and she was immediately attracted to me. And we had this great chemistry. We're walking into a crowded department, so we had this great chemistry, and a few minutes later, we end up in a, a room, a dressing room, of Bergdorf Goodman, right near the cash register. And then she found out there were locks on the door, so she said, I found one that was open. She found one. She learned this at trial. She found one that was open. <laughs> Boy, she learned this at trial. <laughs> kind of a woman meets somebody and brings them up, and within minutes, you're playing hanky-panky in a dressing room, okay? <laughs> I don't know if he was, he was married then or not. John Johnson, I feel sorry for you, John Mr. Johnson. Mr. President, can I... What is the first thing you would do to help bring down the cost to make things more affordable? Drill, baby, drill. <laughs> when we have a debt limit, and they use that very seriously to me, they came in, Schumer came in with Nancy Pelosi, and they were using, we'll violate it, we'll do whatever. They talked a whole lot different than they do right now. I say to the Republicans out there, congressmen, senators, if they don't give you massive cuts, you're going to have to do a default. And I don't believe they're going to do a default because I think the Democrats will absolutely cave because you don't want to have that happen. But it's better than what we're doing right now. Because we're spending money like drunken sailors. So you know just to be clear, Mr. President, you think the U.S. should default if the White House does not agree to the spending cuts Republicans well, are demanding? Well, you might as well do it now because you'll do it later. Because we have to save this country. Our country is dying. Our country is being destroyed by stupid people, by very stupid people. You once said that using the, that using the debt ceiling as a negotiating wedge uh, just could not happen. You, you said that when sure. you were in the That's Oval Office. That's when I was president. To, so why is it different now that you're out of office? Because now I'm not president. Because <laughs> now I'm not president. We have a very big mental health. Yo, I'm not going to front, though. If y'all ever, I never seen the Trump show, but this guy is a comedian though, like for real, for real. He funny. He is funny. <laughs> I will not lie. He has the personality that attracts people. If that if that makes sense, like he just a funny person. Some of the shit I don't agree with. Some of the shit I do agree with. But but as far as like being a personable person, and he's he he say he he honest. He a straight shooter with it, like. I love people like that, straight shooter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever's on my mind, I'm gonna give it to you. Cause even if he say some shit you don't like, you gotta respect the fact that he's willing to tell you the truth. Why do people like to be lied to? I don't like to be lied to. It seems like the world just love lies. You could tell, from his verbiage and the way he speak, you could tell he not filtering none of this shit through his head before he say it, <laughs> which is funny. Problem in this country. And again, it's not the gun that pulls the trigger. It's the person that pulls the trigger. And we have to protect our second amendment. We have to protect our second amendment. Mr. President, you dealt with a lot of mass shootings when you were in office. This year, there have already been more than 200 mass shootings yeah. in 2023. If you are reelected, are there any new gun restrictions that you would sign into law? I would do uh, numerous things. For instance, schools, we would harden, very, very much harden. 
And I also, I'm a very believer. I believe in teachers. I love teachers. I think they're incredible. And they love the children, not quite like the parents, but they love the children in many cases almost as much. Many of these teachers are soldiers, ex-soldiers, ex-policemen. They're people that really understand weapons. And you don't need 5% of the teachers would be more than you could ever have if you're going to hire security guards. But in addition to that, have security guards. Uh, you have to harden your entrances. You have to make schools safe. And you can make other places safe. But it is a big mental health problem in this country more than anything else. If you look at Chicago, Chicago has the single toughest gun policies in the nation. They are so tough you can't breathe. New York too and other places also. All of those places are the worst and most dangerous places. So, so that's not the answer. I consider the other side to be radical. Damn, I just realized that though. Yeah, because Chicago is strict but Indiana is not so they could just go to the next state, right? Like, you know what I'm saying, right? The state over type shit. I don't think New York is as bad, obviously, but Chicago, they kill a lot of people in Chicago with guns. So the fact that they have these strict ass gun laws and it, and it, that shit ends up that way, it, it literally is not the laws. It's like, it's it's something else. I don't have the answer to that, but there's definitely something else. Cause you can put all the laws, but people break, rules were meant to be broken pretty much. You put a rule up, there's gonna be people who follow it and there's gonna be a bunch of people who like, oh hell no, we breaking these rules, so. I don't know how you really fix that. Yo, let me know down in the comments if you got an answer for that. Because I really need it. I need the answers to that. Like, how would you stop that? He said hard in the schools, but I don't know if that's going to stop a deranged person to go in that school and, and do some crazy shit. So. The other side under Roe v. Wade and other things, the other side, they're radical because they will... Remember the debate with Hillary Clinton? They said, rip the baby out of the womb at the end of the ninth month. They will kill the baby in the ninth month. If you look at that crazy governor of Virginia from the former governor, where he said, no, the baby will be born, and then we'll decide essentially whether or not to execute but the Mr. baby. But Mr. President, can we talk about what you would do if no, you are No, but these are the radical are people. It's not the pro-life people that are radical. But if you are re-elected and you're- People that will kill a baby in the ninth month or the eighth month or the seventh month or after the baby is born, they're the radicals, not the pro-life people. I just want to give you- Facts, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people, Probably in my like personal life won't agree with me on that, but I'm pro life and I've always been pro life. And the moment I was able to make decisions, like I could never like harm a baby or tell a baby that, that they don't have a chance because you're a shitty person. It's crazy. Like you need first of all, you need people to populate your country, right? To have people, and then on top of that, I don't think these people are God. I don't think these people have the right as an incompetent person. I did drugs all my life. I did some dumb shit, and then I have autonomy over. If this kid lives or dies, that's some stupid shit. Let's be honest. You're not even, you're not good with yourself, let alone <laughs> to make these type of decisions. Yes, I don't, I don't feel like the government needs to be in every decision, but that's the whole point of having people above you to make kind of the right decision or lean you towards the right decision. Because we, let's be honest, we've, there's probably been more babies killed than, that's just sad to even think about. Like, I'm hella pro-life, like, Life is is important And you should love life and you should want other people to have an opportunity the same way you did everybody didn't grow up rich Most people in the country world and beyond have not grown up rich man. So I there's you know what I'm saying too And people still came out pretty good. So it's like I don't like that at all I, I, I don't appreciate it at all like let the babies live let them get an opportunity to, you know live life and become you know, respectable adults. I, I don't see no problem with that. You're going to have millions of people pouring into our country right now at a level that nobody's ever seen before. These people are sick. Anybody that wants this to happen to our country, they're destroying our country, and this should not be allowed to happen. How they're not going to do a version of Title 42 or my Title 42, which was tough. If people are sick and have infectious diseases and lots of other problems, we don't want them being into our country. We have enough problems right now. We have problems like we've never had in the history of our country. But Mr. Our country, President, our country the is reason being it's ending, destroyed. A country has to have borders. There's never been anything like ha is happening to our country you right now. You built about 52 miles of new wall when you were in office, it Mr. Is. President. It wasn't the complete wall. One other thing that with, with no, immigration... No, but I have to respond to that. With your immigration, it was only about okay, 52 can miles I of new wall. This is what she does. <laughs> you think this is what she does? <laughs> Yo, bro, it's hundreds hilarious. of miles. Some of the wall was up there, and it would be laying on the ground, rusted rotten steel, rusted rotten wood, 
a little. And what the radical left crazy Democrats did, if there's a piece of wood laying down, they consider that a wall. I built 30-foot walls that go down seven feet into the ground. If there was a little piece of wood sitting in the ground, they said, oh, he's not building a wall. We already had a wall. Because this is the game. They're a party of disinformation. It's not a they, game, Mr. President. It's about 52 miles of new wall. One other immigration no, no, policy they, you I have built when you new wall. I built new wall. 52 miles for hundreds of miles. CBP, Mr. What President. What I did is I replaced other wall that was laying down, that was up and rotting in the ground. Damn, they, that's hella disinformation. Yeah, they said they, yo, that's crazy. Because <laughs> if he rebuild the old walls, that count, right? I'm thinking. 30 years. If I were president, this would have never happened. And even the Democrats admit that. Putin knew it would have never happened. And his pipeline would have never happened. A lot of things would have never happened. But this Which would Democrats never have happened. That, and Mr. all those president. dead people, both Russian and Ukrainian, it would, they wouldn't be dead today. And all those cities that are blown up and disintegrated right to the ground, that wouldn't have happened. Would you give Ukraine weapons and funding? I was impeached by a crazy woman named Nancy but Pelosi. But the question here is, best. would you give Ukraine weapons and funding if you were I elected? would sit down. Let, let me just put it a nicer way. Uh, if I'm president, I will have that war settled in one day, 24 hours. How would you settle that war in one day? Because I'll meet with Putin. I'll meet with Zelensky. They both think of, yo, think about this though. He could, the shit that y'all can't access as like people they don't really like, he could kind of walk up in there. Think about it. Just, I'm just thinking like he could walk up in there, bro. Just because of his business before he became president. Probably had these people stayed up at the hotel. Like, you know what I'm saying? They know of him. So that, that so they, they used to him and shit like that. And he has kind of leverage. You know what I'm saying? To, in certain, not always, but certain ways, he probably got a lot of leverage. And know some dirt about these people, you know what I'm saying? Yo, that's, I, that had me thinking like, yo, I don't know if he can end a war one day, that sounds crazy as hell. But I do think he, he knows more, he's, these, these people are more used to, you know, him from beyond politics. So when it comes to politics, then he has, he, I, I think, I'm thinking right now with my brain. I ain't thinking with y'all brain. I'm thinking with my brain. Like, could, could it be possible that he has worldly connections that no one else has as a billionaire? Probably so. Weaknesses and they both have strengths. And within 24 hours, that war will be settled. It'll be over. It'll be absolutely Do you over. want Ukraine to win this war? Uh, I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people and breaking down this, this country. Why did you take those documents with you when you left the White I House? I had every right to under the Presidential Records Act. You have the Presidential Records Act. I was there and I took what I took and it gets declassified. Uh, Biden, on the other hand, he has 1,850 boxes. He had boxes sent to Chinatown, Chinatown, where they don't speak even English in that Chinatown we're talking about. But can and I, I, I got to stop you right there. Nobody talks about him, they talk about us. Uh, just so you understand, I had every right to do it. I didn't make a secret of it. You know, the boxes were stationed outside of the White House. People were taking pictures of the GSA of the various I people. I gotta stop you right there then, because moving. the Presidential Records Act, which is not well known to a lot of people, I read it. It, it does not say that you can take documents with you. It says actually that they it are the property you, of the federal talk, government. It says you talk, you negotiate, you make a deal. It's not criminal, by the it way. Does not, not, it's, it does the not Presidential say that you can Records negotiate. Act is not criminal. And uh, just it so does you not know, say you can negotiate to just take so you, the documents with you. Can I tell you? Just so you understand, the president... Yeah, but but how, like, it's hard for me to listen to people who ain't in them seats, like, you know what I'm saying? You could probably listen to a president in a seat, but wh who is this lady, and how does she know all this shit if she ain't never even been up there? I mean, you could read some shit, but context is behind that. Like, we don't, I don't know how they handle business. He could have did it, could have not have did it. It, it, it. That don't really matter, though. He could have or should have or would have. I, I can probably attest that there's been more than one president who took some shit from the White House. Let, let's be honest. Like, we're not, we not using our brains right now. We we thinking a whole nother, like, use your brain, miss. All them presidents, someone took some shit home, you know what I'm saying? For real. Presidential Records Act is not criminal. I took the documents I'm allowed to. You know who else took them? Obama took them. Nixon took them. Obama Reagan did took them. Documents. Oh, he didn't? The, he, difference, he didn't. the difference here he didn't. that I'd like take to know... Look. Reagan National took Archives them. says that President Obama even Jimmy did not Carter, take even documents. Mike Pence had some documents, and he's a you very honorable Pence, guy. You reference But you Biden. know who took him more than anybody is Joe Biden. He has 1,800 boxes 
and nobody even knows who anything you know 1800 and nobody talks about him it what included a raid on documents. my house that's what it included but they didn't raid a, you'd gotten a they subpoena didn't raid and they Biden's had not house. been turned over yet they didn't raid biden's house you know what happened he, they put him in the house that's the one with the corvette where the documents were laying all over the floor that was fine <laughs> and you know who ha happens to be at mar-a-lago secret service and they're phenomenal I have Secret Service. He didn't have Secret Service. The other thing, the vice president cannot declassify. He didn't have the right to declassify. He has documents from when he was a senator. And even Democrat senators say, I can't believe it. They didn't raid the House of Joe Biden. They didn't raid Obama. But Joe Biden didn't ignore a subpoena to get those documents back like Joe you Biden did. And took so that's 1850 the question. But that's the question that investigators have, I think, is why you held on to those documents when you knew the federal government was seeking them and then had given you a subpoena to return them. Are you them. ready? Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can I, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> Dang. Very Why simple. you held on to the documents? I was negotiating, and we were talking to NARA, that's Washington, to bring whatever they want. They can have whatever they want. When we left Washington, we had the boxes lined up on the sidewalk outside for everybody. People are taking... Yo, my biggest question before I end this video is why is he not in jail if he did all this illegal shit? How is he able to run for president again if he did all this illegal shit? Like, there's something up. I don't know the answer to everything, but I do know that there's something up because... If my black ass, look at me right now, if my black ass was taking documents, you niggas would have thrown me under the jail. So somehow, I don't, like, I don't know who's really telling the truth in this this one, but I feel like it's very odd that he could just come back, run for president, do all this shit, and I basically said, he basically went against, the, the like, the government, like, you know what I'm saying to you? So it's, there's, a, there's something up. There's definitely something up. Hopefully, y'all just stay woke. Man, do what's in the best interest of your family. I am not telling you who to choose, who you want to choose. Choose who you want to choose. Just do what's right for your family, man.